five weird ways that toxic family members punish the truth teller for speaking the truth and for having the audacity to go no contact. That is what we're talking about today. Let's do it. Hey friends, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Tammy M. Joyce. I'm the founder of Tammy M. Coaching and I run a powerful eight week transformational coaching program called The Freedom Class, specific to healing and recovery from codependency and narcissistic abuse. If that's of interest to you, be sure to stick around till the end of the video and I'll tell you how you can learn more about my programs. So let's talk about the five weird ways that toxic family members punish the truth teller, otherwise known as the family scapegoat. For speaking the truth and for choosing to go no contact. And in case you're not clear as to what I mean by the term family scapegoat, the experience of the family scapegoat in a toxic and dysfunctional family system involves a specific kind of emotional and psychological abuse by virtue of the singling out and deliberate targeting of one specific member of the family, usually the most highly empathic the one who is the easiest to target, and also the one most likely to rock the boat, meaning the more sensitive and empathetic person in the family who is not only most likely to see, but also point out, if not push back on the family dysfunction and all of the lies and denial that go along with it. And this scapegoating abuse of the family truth teller includes, but is not limited to, harsh criticism, shaming, blame shifting, as well as the displacing of unresolved issues, pain, anger, and aggression. Issues, pain, anger, and aggression, by the way, that have little, if anything at all, to do with the truth teller who's being cast in the role of family scapegoat. In a narcissistic family, the family blames the truth telling scapegoat for most, if not all of their problems. And they do this as a means of deflecting attention away from the real issues and conflicts that need to be addressed, but continue to go unacknowledged while the toxic family members find relief, quite literally using the truth telling scapegoat as a dumping ground for their negative emotions unresolved issues, and all the stuff they cannot own, acknowledge, or accept about themselves. All of it gets projected onto the truth-telling scapegoat. And as such, the truth-telling scapegoat is chronically ridiculed, mocked, and punished even for the character defects, shortcomings, and mistakes of their abusers, as well as the very real relationship crimes that have been committed by other toxic and narcissistic family members. Which leads me to the first thing toxic family members will do to punish a truth teller. Number one, they twist the truth. Toxic families will twist and distort the truth by lying outright or lying by omission. Whatever works best to prop up their own dishonest narrative and advance whatever self-serving agenda they happen to be running at the time which usually includes covering their own ass while accusing the truth teller of doing, being, and saying all manner of things that they have neither done, been, or said, ever. And if the toxic family members suspect that the truth telling scapegoat has had enough and is preparing to muster the strength and courage to disconnect from and permanently leave the toxic family dynamic, the truth teller will be subjected to an avalanche of gaslighting, invalidation, devaluation, and sometimes even outright bullying via intimidation and threats, all of which is designed to manipulate the scapegoat back into the dysfunctional family fold and the toxic abuse cycle. So they remain the primary repository for, as I said, the family's negative emotions, unresolved issues, and destructive attitudes and behavior. So the truth teller, who is in the process of breaking free from a sick and dysfunctional family system, may very well experience a ton of confusion, 
and self-doubt, about making the decision to permanently cut ties and leave, especially if they have yet to begin their own healing and recovery work and are therefore still susceptible to this kind of manipulation. They're still hoping on some level to someday gain genuine love, acceptance, validation, and approval from people who fully do not have these things to give. Not in any real, genuine, or consistent way, anyway. And the truth teller will be especially susceptible to this kind of manipulation and the subsequent feelings of confusion and self-doubt when they don't have a really strong and clear support system around them. People who actually get it. People who know the game and can help them navigate their way out of the nonsense and the insanity of it all. So the truth-telling scapegoat can and often does grapple with things like irrational guilt, toxic shame, paralyzing fear, intense feelings of isolation, and agonizing loneliness, simply by virtue of even contemplating making the decision to cut the cord. Even when they know they're being mistreated, by their family no less, people they love dearly, People who can't, won't, are fundamentally unable of loving them back, again, in any real, genuine, consistent, or even remotely healthy way. And naturally, this leaves the truth teller facing down the prospect of going it alone in the world, disconnected from any kind of family unit, the very people who have known them their entire lives, their supposed tribe. No matter how painful and destructive belonging to that tribe has been for them, needless to say, the prospect of going it alone in the world can be terrifying, even for the strongest of us. And why is that? Well, because it triggers our deepest survival instincts and all of our abandonment issues. And what adds insult to injury is the knowing that the toxic family is not going to change. After decades of emotional and psychological abuse, the truth teller knows full well that their toxic, manipulative, and deceptive family members aren't suddenly going to morph into decent, kind, loving, and empathetic people who sincerely and genuinely have their best interest at heart. And that alone can be a very difficult reality to accept. Meanwhile, number two, while the truth teller is grappling with these very painful realities, the toxic family, steeped in denial and sometimes even delusion, is busy circling the wagons, fully protecting and enabling the narcissistic ringleader or leaders, whatever the case may be, jumping on the narrative that the real issue has to be the truth teller, because let's face it, they dared speak the truth which, when it comes to a dysfunctional family system, is a very real threat. It threatens the status quo, the denial-laden comfort coma that the family is in. Moreover, it also threatens to expose all of the family secrets. And we all know how toxic and dysfunctional families love to keep their secrets buried, at all costs. Even if that cost means the vilifying and sacrificing the emotional health and well-being of one member of the family, AKA the truth-telling family scapegoat. Which leads me to the next thing toxic family members do to punish a truth-teller. Not least a truth-teller who dares even consider going no contact. Number three, the truth-teller will be vilified. That's right. When you say to a toxic family that I simply cannot do this anymore, However you choose to send that message, either by word or deed, either you speak your mind loud and clear on your way out, or you simply walk away without wasting your breath and uttering so much as another word. Either way, when you dare send a message that clearly states I'm done, I'm not doing this anymore, I can't, I won't, I'm out, what you're really doing is shining a big bright light on the truth of the situation. And toxic families, well, they don't like that. So know in advance that there will be some form of retaliation. It's coming. And the primary way this retaliation is coming is you will be vilified. As fully and completely as they can manage, you'll be accused of lacking compassion and empathy 
from the very people who have consistently demonstrated a serious lack of compassion and empathy towards you and for a long time. Remember, toxic families are toxic primarily because many of the family members are highly narcissistic. Now, whether they be overt or covert, either way. And if you want to learn more about covert narcissism, you can watch this video here and this video here. In fact, I have a whole playlist on this channel on the subject. The point being, your toxic and narcissistic family members are not going to just roll over and allow themselves to be held accountable for, again, the very real relationship crimes they've committed. They aren't ever going to take any real responsibility for the part they play in all of the pain, drama, and trauma that's gone on, usually that they've caused. And the entire family has to be steeped in denial in order to survive the sick family dynamic. Therefore, no one is going to have the truth tellers back. No one is going to stand up for, never mind protect, the truth telling scapegoat, not least from the more dominant and narcissistic ringleader. Instead, they're more likely to turn on the truth teller and come up with a long list of reasons why they are the issue, as opposed to the real issue actually being the issue. The truth teller will be accused of making things up and flat out lying for no other reason than just to be spiteful, just to be hurtful, because that's who they are, according to the toxic family members. You'll be accused of being the one in need of psychiatric help because, according to the toxic family, that's who you are. Not them, you. Again, you'll be accused of doing, being, and saying things you have never, ever done, been, or said. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter how good your intent, no matter how true and genuine your motives are, no matter who you're trying to protect with the truth, you will be vilified in every possible way. Now, comment below and tell me whether or not you've been the truth teller, cast as the family scapegoat in a toxic and dysfunctional family system. And if so, what have you done to take care of yourself, to protect yourself, to love, nurture, and validate yourself, and the truth of your experiences? Let me know in the comments section below. And if this speaks to you, and you know you still have work to do to heal from the toxic experience with your toxic family, whether that be your family of origin or your in-laws, either way, you're likely an excellent candidate for my eight-week transformational coaching program, The Freedom Class. If that's of interest to you, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. Now, the next thing toxic family members will do to punish the truth teller is number four. They'll align with those who have hurt you. That's right. They'll align themselves with those who have hurt, betrayed, abandoned, and or rejected you in some way. It's just one more way toxic family members not only prop themselves up in their distorted narrative, lies, and delusions, but also it's how they punish the truth teller through this very deliberate and malevolent act of betrayal. In their mind, this aligning with others who have targeted you in the past serves a number of purposes, not least being the more people who are against you, the more you are alone. The more you are alone, the more you look and sound like you're the problem, which works beautifully to undermine your credibility. So whatever truth you might be speaking won't be taken seriously. After all, everybody thinks you're such and such, and everybody knows this and that about you. Friends, everybody is a big word and rarely an accurate assessment when coming out of the mouth of a destructive narcissist who is trying to hide their dirty secrets and relationship crimes by vilifying the family truth teller. So always consider the source and don't get any of that shit on you. Let that nonsense land over there somewhere. Now, that said, last but not least, number five. Once the narcissistic abusers realize the game has changed for real and for good by virtue of the fact that the truth-telling scapegoat isn't playing anymore, they're done, and therefore they've gone no contact, 
it is very common for members of the toxic family to work overtime with intent to further isolate the truth teller by gathering the troops. And how they do this is by running a highly manipulative and fully deceptive smear campaign. And they'll run this campaign specifically with people who might have otherwise thought well of the truth teller if it weren't for the fact that they're naive enough to allow their perceptions to be manipulated and their hearts to be fully poisoned towards the truth teller. As the old saying goes, be careful what you hear about someone. You might be hearing it from the problem. Here's the thing. When toxic people realize they can no longer control you, they'll go to great lengths to control what others think and how they feel about you. And to be clear, gathering the troops via a smear campaign is nothing less than a narcissist's active efforts to discredit, devalue, invalidate, and oppress a specific target through toxic gossip, blatant lies, as well as loads of twisting, distorting, and lies by omission. It fundamentally boils down to this. They have to assassinate your character as a preemptive measure. It's vital that they maintain control of the narrative. And a big part of how they ensure their success in this regard is they go out of their way to pull anyone who will listen onto their team with their distorted narrative which of course includes the narcissist playing the victim. Something else the truth teller is likely going to have to contend with, or at least accept from a distance, if they're smart and taking good care of themselves, it's the toxic family member's tendency to play victim to circumstances they not only have created, but they perpetuate. I've always found it fascinating just how quickly people who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism turn into the victim when they realize they're losing control of their chosen scapegoat, especially once said scapegoat starts standing up and speaking some truth into the situation. And in my view, there's a number of reasons for this, not least being that toxic family members tend to be, as I said, narcissistic, and therefore are fundamentally childish, emotionally and psychologically crippled, despite outwards appearances. The truth is, they have little to no ability to regulate their own emotions, meaning the truth-telling scapegoat and chosen target actually plays an important role in the toxic family member's emotional stability, as long as they're willing to stand still and be abused, that is. Once the truth-telling scapegoat cuts ties with the toxic family, the toxic family members no longer have anyone to project all of their suppressed negative emotions onto. Instead, they're forced to carry the burden and full weight of it, which is not something they're well prepared or even remotely able to do for any length of time. Which is why it's not at all uncommon to see the life of a toxic family member who no longer has a suitable scapegoat begin to become unraveled and fall apart at the seams. Their life can quite literally become more and more unmanageable until they either succeed in manipulating their primary scapegoat back into the toxic abuse cycle, or failing that, find the next target to use, abuse, and exploit. In the meantime, their ability to cope, their emotional equilibrium, so to speak, begins to deteriorate. If they're drinkers or food addicts or sex addicts or gamblers or whatever, you can be sure that their addictive compulsive behaviors will be on the rise. And of course, the truth-telling scapegoat will be to blame. The bottom line is the toxic family members without a scapegoat to target will become progressively more anxious, irritable, resentful, angry, hostile, and depressed even, as well as obsessed. It's not pretty. Which is why, as the truth-telling family scapegoat, you can bet your bottom dollar, after you've left, successfully and permanently, your toxic family will have to find a new scapegoat to target and abuse. Their ability to maintain their false image and perfect, perfect persona literally depends on it. When the truth-telling scapegoat leaves the toxic family system, for a time, the abusers won't have anyone to project all of their suppressed toxicity and negative emotions onto. Instead, like I said, they'll be forced to deal with them on their own. But in the case of highly narcissistic family members, the problem with this is 
This is quite literally impossible for them to do. And it boils down to this. Every dysfunctional family needs a scapegoat in order to be able to maintain the homeostatic balance of the sick family system. So when one scapegoat leaves, if the prospect of manipulating them back into the fold isn't looking good, then they'll be left with no alternative than to choose another scapegoat. And I'm often asked how narcissists can live with themselves given how they behave. And the truth is, this is exactly how they live with themselves. By having a target to project onto, they lighten the load they carry and in a very sick way, walk away feeling relieved, better about themselves. Sick stuff, but this is actually how it works. Now, the good news for the truth-telling scapegoat is this. The longer you stay away from your toxic and destructive family, whether that be, again, your family of origin or your toxic and destructive in-laws, either way, the more you commit to doing your own deep dive, inner healing and recovery work, the better, more peaceful, joyful and productive your life will become. The more you do your work, the more your confidence grows. The more your confidence grows, the more you attract good people and good things into your life. The more you step into your full power and potential, the more you live your divine mission and purpose on this planet. And I promise you that is a beautiful thing. Give yourself the gift. You deserve at least that and so much more. It's time now. How can Tammy M Coaching help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell to make sure you get my new video every Friday. Number two, watch my free web class by clicking on the link in the description below. You'll learn about my personal journey and professional experience through decades of research specific to healing and recovery from codependency and narcissistic abuse. You'll also learn about some strategies that you can begin to use today. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, and you'd like to be surrounded by a stellar community of like-minded people who are focused on solutions that actually work, you can learn more about my eight-week transformational coaching program, The Freedom Class, by going to TammyMCoaching.com and clicking on programs and reviews for all the details. And number four, if you want some help right now because you have a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to break free from painful relationship patterns permanently and actually make lasting progress in your healing and recovery, go to TammyMCoaching.com and click on apply now to learn how you can become my client.